So today's video is all about Ineos, Manchester United, why I don't think it's going to be a good combination as people expect. So if you don't know, this is a different video to what I normally do. Normally I make exciting content, but I also really like football as well. I used to play quite a lot of football back in the day. Um, proudest achievement, scoring goal against Notts County, number 16s. Uh, anyway, so reason why I make this video is because Manchester United have been bought by Ineos. They've got 25% of the stake. They're going to take over the football, football in control of Manchester United. And I want to go through why I don't think this is going to make any difference and also why I don't think Ineos are market leaders in sport at all. And this is going to be a case study exclusively done on the cycling team. So first of all, Ineos Grenadiers' performance so far from 2019, clear regression. They've got worse. The world rankings I actually looked at, they don't know, they haven't got much worse, but that's because they've recalculated the world rankings where more good riders helps them. So there hasn't actually been a massive change in that. They haven't won a Grand Tour since 2021. Uh, which is like cycling's biggest races. So again, not good in terms of like results. In 2019, they got first and second in the Tour. This year, 2023, fifth at the Tour, second in the Giro. Even last year, they, they had some good results, like, but then they just keep getting rid of their good riders. But we're going to go through to that. In terms of monuments, they did win a monument last year. They haven't won one this year. So it's hard to say there's a clear trend. But I do think general perception is they are getting weaker. Their wins similar, but I'd say they're not as prestigious as they once were. So their performance is getting worse. Um, they're definitely not anywhere near to winning the tour. And there's a lot of reasons for that, which we're going to go into now. Which are, And I think this is the biggest thing, is the chaotic recruitment. Now, Manchester United have chaotic recruitment. They've signed too many players on massive, massive, massive contracts um, who aren't good enough. They don't have the right head example obviously cycling is different you don't really get riders who don't try because if you don't try what's the point of being a cyclist well football you do because you can rely on talent more but i'd say the biggest thing is that they lose consistently um they're consistently losing the high paid but well performing riders they've lost yates carapaz sivakov van Baal. those people are all really good and i know you, there's been a lot of injuries with bernal for example and Froome probably did cause some chaos in this in this period However, losing all those riders is pretty disastrous. Um, Carapaz, okay, he might not be able to win a tour. He is very good. He came second in the Giro last year. Like, he is he is a strong rider. And I think, ultimately, I just don't uh, agree with the tactic that they're having of getting rid of riders and not, not, um, not replacing them with anyone except really young talent. They've also lost a lot of young British talent to other teams. So, Ben Tullett, they signed um, and then... He went to Yumbo because they were seen as a better team. So losing key talent, I don't think is good. They also haven't managed to recruit talent from the UK that effectively. They, yes, they signed Josh Harling. Yes, they signed Tom Pickock. Have they haven't signed Oscar Onley, uh, Max Poole, who are really good young British riders. And I think if we're going back to football, this isn't good signs. I don't think their recruitment is good. And you might say, why does that? come across and it might it might not they might sign good people in football who know what they're doing but what i mean is that it's not a well-run team no one in cycling thinks ineos is a well-run team at the moment compared to what it used to be their signings are chaotic no one really understands what they're doing and they've signed loads of random young people who i don't understand and no one really understands why they'd sign them uh for football in terms it'd be like signing a 15 year old and putting them in the first team and just hoping they do okay like they've signed North American riders like AJ August, who no one's even seen yet, Ma uh, Max, uh, Magnus Sheffield, uh, and Michael Leonard, all from North America, all straight from juniors. And again, it's very odd recruitment. No one can figure out what they're doing. And I think it goes to show there's kind of chaos within Ineos Grenadiers, at least. And again, going over to football, I don't know why it would be that different. Obviously, there's going to be a different management structure. But we're going to go on to that now because I do think that is quite a an issue actually we'll get it after this one the other thing i think is technologically like and sort of physiologically the stuff they're doing is not good um riders have been regressing at the team they've had a lot of young riders they've signed on like luke platt maybe ethan hater i know it's always like difficult because people have injuries and stuff especially ethan hater this year but they haven't actually got much better at you know obviously like they are better riders than they were when they signed obviously but they're not progressing as much as you think they used to be they're not looking like wow that when you go to Ineos, you get a step up. While they've also lost people like Adam Yates, who's done significantly better on UAE than he did for Ineos. Um, I mean, he came third in the Tour this year, uh, and he didn't look like he was like close to that, really. On Ineos, he was barely scraping the top 10. Uh, Eddie Dunbar as well, like he just barely got a look in, but like 
you could say, okay, he didn't get a look in, but if he would have got a look in if he was coming top five in the, in the or top ten in the Giro, which I think he did in the end. Um, so again, like riders that they have, I don't think they use to their full potential. So going back to football, again, it just paints a picture of like people not really knowing what they're doing. And I think if you're coming into a new environment where they've looked after football clubs before, like Monaco, for example, I do think it really goes to show like this Ineos being a panacea of all things good. I really don't think it's going to be the case. Um, then we're going to go on to chaotic management decisions because Rod Ellingworth left to Bahrain. He then returned and now, it, like this was quite a long time ago, um, and then he just left Ineos this summer unexpectedly. No one knows why. It's absolute like, it's just really odd. In it, Rod Ellingworth, if you don't know, is like the OG Ineos man. He was the guy who like really set up Sky, made them a good cycling team. And ultimately, like, him leaving or returning I, I don't know but there shouldn't be this much chaos and it shouldn't be done this close to the start of the new season really um and i think you've got dave brailsford where i don't really understand or no one really understands what he's done he left the cycling team because he had bigger fish to fry at ineos the actual company uh doing like the sports part and then he's back in the cycling because it wasn't going well. Um, and again, I don't think he's going to be down day to day running of Manchester United. And again, like it all comes down to the experience of like, does he understand football? I don't know. Does that make a difference? Again, I don't know. But I do think it's like there isn't this strong management cu uh, culture of Ineos, which you'd expect there to be. There does seem to be a lot of wild decisions. You've got Zach Dempster as a DS, so I just don't understand how. Um, you've got Steve Cummings, who's been promoted a lot into director of racing, but when he's been DS, I don't know if they've got that good of results. So again, it's like, there seems to be, okay, they do change stuff quite a lot, which you could uh, argue is a good thing because it means that they are looking at how to increase, like how to improve. But I also think it goes to show that like there is no real long-term outlook as much. And I also don't really know where the long-term vision is if you keep changing who the head uh, of the team is. Finally, I think it's a lack of innovation. Obviously, they signed Dan Bigham uh, to do aerodynamics as an aerodynamicist and general performance engineer, which I think is good. good signing. He's got a big brain. Um, he sorts stuff out. But the comment of like Rowan Dennis, uh, who was a time trial world champion, if you didn't know, he was saying that Ineos was just copying another team, Yamba Visma, and that like they weren't as in innovative as before. The number of staff members they have is absolutely unbelievable. It's like 50 something, I think. They've got loads of um, nutritionists, loads of like, they have their own uh, person who does interventions on nutrition, who like does studies on it. So I do think it's odd that there seems to be a lack of innovation, but really like they don't seem to have done too much groundbreaking stuff. I think except the Dan Diggins aerodynamics is really important, but I do think there seems to have lost their edge that they used to have in terms of like cutting edge science um maybe that's other teams stepping up but again i don't think that's like you're going to get this manchester united of oh suddenly they're just scientifically the best team in the world i don't i don't think that's going to be the case because you don't see it with any else that they are a step above everyone else they might be similar levels to the top teams which i think they are but they're not where they used to be where they were significantly better than everyone else so i think my point is, what does this actually mean for Manchester United? I think what it means is that people are not going to, it's not going to change as much as people think it is. Ultimately, the money being spent by the Glazers or uh, Jim Ratcliffe, there's a lot of money to be spent. It's all about management. It's all about uh, culture. And my point is, is that in, at Ineos Grenadiers, I don't believe that there has been a significant increase in their performances. If anything, there's been a decrease and i think most people would agree that there's been a um a downgrade and a, de a decline in their performance since they took over the team in 2019 and i think that as a football as a manchester united fan i wouldn't be that over the moon about it i think everyone thinks anything but the glazers but i think ultimately they're not the best people at running sport in my opinion um maybe i haven't looked into that other business ventures but at least in cycling i don't think they really are anything out of the ordinary. I don't think the way the way they run the team as well is good. You could also argue that they've taken money out of the team, which is why they're not doing as well. And that is a valid point. If the budgets, which no one really knows, have reduced, then that is fair enough. And maybe they're doing quite well. But I think in general, they're not they're not the people that it, they seem to be painted out to be as this super uh, uber slick organization team. And I think a lot of the things people are looking at from the cycling team was what was set up in Team Sky um, by Fran Miller, by Dave Brailsford, by people who really were the, like top operators of their time. And I think they've taken it over. And if anything, they kind of just fallen asleep on the job would be my 
personal analysis.